In this video, I'll compare a regular watercolor paintbrush with a water brush. Which one's better? Stick around to find out. All right, so I'm going to be using one of these water brushes. This is a Sakura Koi water brush. If you've never used a water brush, I'll explain a little bit more about it shortly, but I'm also going to be using a standard watercolor paintbrush as well. I want to see which one performs better, which one I prefer. So this is kind of a little experiment because I have only used a water brush once before. I'm gonna be using the Watercolor Confections Essence Palette. And to begin, I've just mixed up a little bit of a green color with some water and I'm just creating sort of a oval shape with a missing bottom. I'll add a little bit of a darker mixture of that same color to the edges just to give it a little bit of depth. And one thing that you'll see that I am able to do using a standard paintbrush is lift off some of the paint that might be a little bit too watery or might have little puddles forming. It's a little bit more difficult to do that with a water brush. So this is something that the standard watercolor paintbrush definitely has an advantage over the water brush. I always like to use different tones of green and different shades of green when I'm creating something with a lot of greenery. So for these different cacti, I'm going to mix up different shades using a bit of yellow golden colors and a little bit of blue, just to give each shape a little bit more definition and to kind of make it a little more illustrated looking. I wanted to keep each little oval shape pretty wet um, because when we do use the water brush, you're gonna see that it definitely allows for a more wet style of painting. So I'm just adding the darker detail areas with the brush and sort of letting those blend into the wet painted areas. Now with the paintbrush and the separate jar of water, you're definitely able to adjust the opacity of your paint a lot better. So if you want a color that's a little bit more vibrant, it's really not that hard to do because you have complete control over the amount of water that you're adding to the paint. And as those layers dry a little bit, I'm gonna go back in again with a wet brush and just add those line details down the centers of each little cacti. One thing I do have to say with these watercolor palettes um, that come in the tins like this, I really don't like mixing on them. Because of the tin material, it causes the paint to just ball up in these little water droplets and I really have a hard time using them. You can mix and mix and mix your paint and then it just all kind of clumps together into a little ball and it looks like you don't have enough even if you do it's just i don't know it's just a personal a personal preference i don't really enjoy mixing on these tin trays so next time i would definitely do this in my little ceramic or porcelain uh, mixing tray now that the paint is a little bit more dry i can go in with a higher paint concentration of color and create these more defined details. The lighting's a little bit weird, I apologize, but I'm just creating those lines and I'm kind of defining around the edges of some of these shapes a little bit more. And now I'm going to finish off with some detail spikes. So I'm just gonna create some very loose little star shapes and little X's um, just to create these little pointy bits all over each little cacti. I don't know if that should be each cacti or each cactus, I don't know. And I'm just using a smaller brush to do this. This is a number two um, round brush. And I'm using really light sketchy strokes just to add some of that detail without going overboard and without making full on outlines of everything. So this is one thing that I like about using the brushes over the water brush is that you can get those different um, intensities of color. 
And I'm going to finish that off with a couple of little flowers. So I've mixed up a little pinkish purpley shade here. And I'm just going to very loosely put in some little spiky flower pieces. And then I'll add a yellow one as well, just for a little bit of additional color. All right, so now let's move on to the water brush. The water brush has a plastic reservoir that holds the water. You just screw it into the tip that you want to use. And these are really handy for traveling when you don't have like a jar of water. You don't want to carry one around with you. To get water out, you can just give it a little bit of a squeeze and then mix your paint up as I'm doing here. There are different brush tips that you can get as well. I think I'm using a medium tip here. I'm not sure exactly what size that is in regular paintbrush terms, but I'd estimate it's probably around a six to an eight. So I'm just gonna try to recreate this illustration using the water brush. And the very first thing that I notice is that the way that I hold the brush has to change. Because the brush is a lot shorter and it's wider, it feels more like a Crayola crayon. But with painting, you don't wanna hold it down by the tip like a crayon. Um, you wanna hold it a way that's comfortable enough to allow your wrist to move a little bit more so that's just something i found a little bit awkward i think if it was a little bit longer that might help i'm not sure if they make water brushes that are longer than this or not but for this size it was a little bit awkward the thing with a water brush is that it's pretty much always got wet bristles because the water is continuously um very slowly but continuously kind of dripping out of that reservoir down into the brush area and the bristles of a water brush are actually a more plasticky material so you're not going to get that sort of water absorption and hold that you would with a synthetic animal hair or an actual animal hair paintbrush so i haven't been squeezing the brush at all as i go and you can see that it re still remains pretty wet you can see that my cacti are um, a little bit more light toned than the one using the paintbrush and that's simply because of the water amount that is sort of constantly coming out of the bristles. What it does allow you to do though is just go directly into your paint without much water added um, to get those sort of darker tones and a more opaque consistency. However, I have found that it's not going to be as opaque as using a paintbrush. I do actually really like the softness of this piece better than the paintbrush piece. Um, I also think that's just because my technique has kind of changed a little bit regarding how I have to hold the brush and so forth. But I do like the effect that the water brush gives for softer looking pieces. You can wipe your brush off on a paper towel to take some of that excess water off, um, but be quick when you do it because it is still going to gradually get wetter. And if you've seen me clean off the color of my brush, all I do is squeeze out a little puddle of water and just kind of rinse my brush off that way. So it definitely makes things a little easier for if you are traveling. I guess it all depends on your personal preference and how you like to work. I think I definitely prefer putting water on a paintbrush and being able to sort of dry it off a little bit if I need to or squeegee it out a little bit on the water jar um, and sort of do things that way. So you can see here that I'm just going straight into the paint palette and just adding a tiny little bit of water and the color payoff is definitely not as vibrant as it was in the previous illustration using just the watercolor paintbrush. So I'll just go in again and create the same little details that I did on the other one. Um, I found this to be pretty much the same as the paintbrush. Again, it's just going to be a little bit lighter, but the fine tip of the pointer brush definitely um, gives that same effect and allows you to get little, a little bit more detailed. One thing I do not like about the bristles is that they are so plasticky that they just kind of snap back really quickly to um, the original shape. So I feel like pressing down on the belly of this brush, it's not really going to give the desired effect. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> 
basically the bristles are stiffer and they're not as uh, they're flexible but they're not as soft as a regular paintbrush so anyways, that is the finished piece. Um, what do you guys like better? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I prefer a paintbrush, but what do you guys think? What do you prefer? Let me know which illustration you like the best and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I hope to see you in the next one.